You are the mayor of a city consisting of six islands. Between some of the islands are bridges, and there's a certain number of lanes of traffic on each bridge. To prevent the spread of a disease, we want to isolate a subset of the islands. We do this by closing lanes of traffic. We want to minimize the number of lanes we need to close. Let's use some graph theory to solve the problem. The islands will be vertices, the bridges edges, and the lanes of traffic on each bridge will be the weight of each edge. The graph G will consist of vertices and edges, or islands and bridges in our city. The problem of finding the minimum number of lane closures translates to finding the minimum cut in the graph. In order to define the minimum cut, we need to first define a cut. A cut C in the graph is simply a partition of the vertices of the graph. The weight of the cut is the sum of the weights on the crossing edges. Edges where one endpoint is in one part and the other endpoint is in the other. A minimum cut is then a cut with minimum weight. In our example here, the minimum cut has weight 4. For simplicity, we'll present an algorithm which finds the weight of the minimum cut in G, but it can be modified to find the cut as well. First, some intuition for finding the cut. Suppose we started with a set containing an arbitrary vertex, say A. We want to grow the set so that it eventually becomes one of the parts in the partition. Which vertices might we want to add to the set? It seems natural to add a vertex whose edge to A has a large weight, like B. This way, the large edge wouldn't be crossing the cut. It's not such a good idea to add a vertex whose edge to A has a low weight, like E. This is also true of sets which contain more than one vertex. Here, consider a set containing the vertices E and D. It helps to think of the set as a supernode containing both the vertices. The weight of the edges to the supernode is the sum of the weights to the individual nodes. Here too, we also want to add the vertices whose edge to the supernode has large weight, like C. We don't want to add vertices whose edge to the supernode has low weight, like A. This might cause the large weight edges to cross the cut. So with this in mind, let's look at the algorithm. It consists of several iterations, where in every iteration, we find a cut in what I'm going to be calling a natural way, and then I'm going to make the graph smaller. First, let's see an example of finding the cut in the natural way. We start with a set containing an arbitrary vertex, here A. While there are vertices not in the set, we'll do the following. We find the node whose edge to A is maximized, here B. Then we create a supernode consisting of all vertices in the set. Then we find the vertex whose edge to the supernode has largest weight, here F. And we repeat. until every vertex is in the set. The cut will put the last vertex on one side and all the other vertices on the other. To make the graph smaller, we'll merge the last two vertices added to the set. Here, E and D. When merging two vertices, we'll delete the edges going between them, and for any edge going to either E or D, they'll now go to D, E, the new vertex. Now let's see the iterations in action. We already saw what happened during the first iteration. Here's what happens in subsequent iterations. At the end of each iteration, we store the size of the cut. The minimum of all of these is the weight of the min cut in the graph. Now that we have an idea as to how the algorithm works, Let's see how efficient it is. The efficiency is a function of the size of the graph, and in particular, the number of edges and vertices. The algorithm has several iterations, and in each, we have to find a cut. To do so, we must find a vertex whose edge weight to the current vertices in the set is maximized. We can find the vertex quickly if they were originally stored in a heap. If you're not familiar with a heap, don't worry. Just think of it as a clever way that computer scientists came up with to store data. If you do learn about it in the future, then I hope that this application will serve as motivation. All told, the time per iteration when using a heap is on the order of the number of edges plus 
the number of vertices times log of the number of vertices. At the end of an iteration, we also merge a pair of vertices. Thus, there are the number of vertices minus one iterations. Multiply this by the time per iteration to get the total running time. We don't care about constants in lower order terms. How does the Stower Wagner min cut algorithm compare to other algorithms for finding the min cut? If you've seen the min cut before, then it's probably in the context of the max flow algorithm. For those who are unfamiliar, here's a brief overview of the max flow problem. There's a source node in one part of the min cut and a sync node on the other. We want to know the maximum amount of flow we can send from the source to the sink. Think of this as the maximum amount of traffic between islands F and C. As it turns out, the maximum amount is exactly the weight of the minimum cut. Thus, an algorithm which computes the maximum flow also finds the weight of the minimum cut. Edmund Karp is the standard max flow algorithm and runs in time on the order of the number of vertices times the number of edges squared. There are various improvements which give better running times. There are also randomized min cut algorithms which output a min cut with high probability. Karger's is one such algorithm. There you sample an edge proportional to its weight and merge its endpoints. Higher weight edges are more likely to be merged, similar to our intuition from before. When comparing these running times, it's important to keep in mind that the number of edges is at most the number of vertices squared. Thus, the Stower Wagner algorithm is more efficient when there are only a few edges. After all this talk about the algorithm, let's make sure it's correct. It follows from this claim. Each iteration will return the weight of a minimum cut separating the last two nodes added. Recall that each iteration consists of finding the cut in the natural way and then merging the last two vertices added. For the first iteration, the claim is that any cut separating E and D must have weight at least 5. Let's see why this algorithm is true if the claim is true. Here we have the graph at the beginning of each iteration and the weight of the cut returned after the iteration. Let's superimpose the minimum cut. The minimum cut size returned by any iteration occurs exactly when there is one vertex on either side of the minimum cut. Since we are merging vertices until only one remains, there will be an iteration where one vertex is on either side of the partition of the minimum cut. By the claim, the weight of the cut returned by the iteration will be smaller than any cut separating these two nodes, in particular the minimum cut of the graph. So it remains to prove the claim. This may be the most difficult part, but don't panic. It might not make sense immediately, but it will with time and repeat viewings. Let's begin. The cut returned by the first iteration has E on one side and all the other vertices on the other. We want to show that the cut returned by the iteration is the minimum among all cuts which separate the last two nodes added. So let's take a cut C which separates D and E. The key is to consider the active nodes. An active node is in a different part of the cut than the node added before it. B is an active node. F is an active node. D is not an active node. The active nodes of this iteration are highlighted in gray. Take a moment to think of why the last node must be active. The rest of the proof will be easier to show on a bigger graph. Suppose there are n vertices u1 through un. The cut returned by the iteration will have un on one side and the other vertices on the other. Again, we take a cut c, which separates un from un minus 1. We want to show that the weight of c is at least the weight of the cut returned by the iteration. Let vi be the set of vertices from u1 up to but not including ui. Ci be the cut c restricted to the vertices u1 through ui. Here we ignore the vertices with index greater than i. If ui is an active node, then we'll show that the following inequality is true. If this inequality is true for all active nodes, then the claim will be proven since the last node is an active node. Let s1 through sk be the indices of the active nodes. For the first active node, the inequality holds with equality. Since u sub si is the first active node, all the previous nodes must be on the other side of the cut. Thus, the cut c sub si is exactly the edges going from u sub si to the vertices in the v sub si. Suppose the inequality is true for the first i active nodes. We show that it is true for the i plus first active node. 
Consider the edges going from the vertex u sub s sub i plus 1 to the vertices added before it. We write it as a sum of two terms. The first term takes into account the edges going between u s i plus 1 and the vertices added before u s i. The second term takes into account the edges going from u s i plus 1 to the vertices between u s i and u s i plus 1. Recall how the vertices were chosen. The weight of the edge to the previously added vertices is maximized. Thus, the weight of the edges from USI to VSI is at least the weight of the edges from USI plus 1 to VSI plus 1. By assumption, this is at most the weight of CSI. But the edges going between USI plus 1 and the vertices between USI and USI plus 1 plus the edges in CSI is less than or equal to the number of edges in CSI plus 1. In the figure, the dashed blue edges are in CSI plus 1, but neither of the two other sets. Thus, the inequality holds for the I plus first active vertex. By induction, it holds for all active vertices, and in particular, the last vertex added. Again, don't worry if it doesn't all make sense right now. If you go through the proof again slowly today, and once more in a week, it should make more sense. The brain has a strange way of making connections even when we're not paying attention. I'll leave you with a haiku summarizing everything we've talked about. To find a min cut, add node with largest weight edge, merge last two, repeat.